thought it could be a good idea to show you an example of uh, closest approach distance. Uh, so this is actually one that's very much like an IB uh, past exam question. In fact, this is uh, similar to May 2009, and it was uh, time zone two, it was paper two, and it was a question that asked about uh, closest approach. Uh, change the numbers a little bit around, but uh, it's basically the same thing. So we have uh, an alpha particles that are bombarding gold atoms. Just like we talked about before here, we've got alpha particles flying in and coming near gold. And here what happens, of course, is they will come really close and then turn around. That would be the closest approach distance. We talked about before how we can derive the equation uh, for the radius here by setting, uh, well, by knowing that the kinetic energy coming in is going to be completely converted to potential energy right here at this point of closest approach. And then we could use uh, equations for potential energy for electrostatic situations. And we had this right here, that the potential was equal to the potential energy over the charge. And we also found another equation for the potential, that it was kq over r. We combined these two together. We ended up with an equation r is kq1, q2 over delta ep. I'm going to start with that equation first of all. So r is kq1, q2 over delta ep. Um, I didn't actually make that that clear, but it was. So the important thing then is to look up what different uh, values are. So first of all, what is k? Well, we need to find that on our equation sheet. And it turns out we can find that on the second page of our equation sheet. We can find it right here that k, the Coulomb constant, is 8.99 times 10 to the 9. That's the important thing to remember. So it's going to be 8.99 times 10 to the 9. We'll need that. Now we need to know what the charge is of, uh, let's say, the alpha particle. Let's call that one, that's for the alpha. We know that alpha particles actually have twice the charge of an electron. That's actually the definition of an alpha particle. So we have to know that, that it's got uh, twice uh, that charge. You can actually know that because um, if you look at this, helium, by the way, that's an alpha particle. An alpha particle, which is two, four like this, I tell you that there's two protons and there's a total of four nucleons. And that's because there's a, nucleons are a protons plus neutrons. So there's two neutrons, there's two protons. It turns out the electrons, uh, or sorry, the charge of it is actually very much related to the charge of an electron. In other words, the proton is the same as the charge of an electron, but just opposite sign. And since this has two of them, then it'll be two times the charge of a proton. Now what's the charge of a proton? Well, that's all to do with the elementary charge. So E is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So an alpha particle will have a charge of twice that. So twice times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Our gold, well, that has a Z value or Z value, depending on uh, where you're from, if you're from the US or Canada, um, Canadians, of course, I say Z, but uh, it has this number here, 79 at the bottom. So that tells me how many protons there are. Therefore, its charge is going to be 79 times this number here. Now that's going to be our gold. And then we're going to have to know about our delta EP. So we better figure that out as well. Now delta EP is going to be the same as our EK, which is going to be 4.5. Now, if you want to know about mega, that means, because it's mega electron volt, that's times 10 to the 6. So that's 10 to the 6 EV. But we need to figure out, uh, we need to get that in joules. If we're going to use this equation that has sort of regular units, we need to convert this to joules. So you need to remember how to multiply, or uh, sorry, how to change things into joules. And the way to do that, of course, is we remember that there are, uh, oops, got to be careful here. Make sure to make this. So 4.5 times 10 to the 6, that's EV. And I want to multiply that by, remember that there's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules for every EV. I've done this uh, before in the last example. And therefore, I can see what I get here. So I'll do it on my calculator. Again, it's always a good idea to show uh, how everything is done. So we can actually see everything happening here. We have 4.5 times 10 to the power of 6. All that times 1.6 times 10 to the minus. I never like my minuses. 19. So that gives me 7.2 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. I'm going to need that number. So again, it did something weird here. So times 10 to the minus 13 joules. 
That's my delta EP. Well, now I'm in business. I have everything I need in order to do this. It's like my shopping list here. So I've got everything I need. So I can finally do it then. So my R then will be K, which is 8.99 times 10 to the 9, times one of my uh, Qs, which is 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, times 79 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. All that divided by 7.2 times 10 to the minus 13. I can do all that on my calculator as well. This might get a little bit annoying here, but oh well. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. So 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9. These are just tedious, but they're not actually that hard. Times 2. I'm actually going to multiply the regular numbers. I'm going to do 2 times 79. And the reason is because now I have 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 twice. So I can say times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Oops. And since I have it twice, I can say that it's squared. Just to keep it easier, I don't feel like writing it down a second time. Take this, and I'm going to divide that by 7.2. 7.2 times 10 to the power of negative 13. If I do that, I end up with 5.05 .05 times 10 to the minus 14. I'm only allowed two significant figures, so it'll be 5.1 times 10 to the minus 14. So that's how close it'll get, which is actually really, really close. It's not like it uh, flies away really, really far. This is actually quite close. So that's how close it'll get.